think most guitar builders would agree that the most difficult part and certainly one of the most time consuming parts of the guitar is shaping the neck and it's got to look good it's got to feel good and I've kind of pushed my guitar making skills to the limit by making a really thin neck that I've reinforced with uh, carbon fibre this is square section carbon fibre and then this groove here makes room for a uh, metal truss rod that goes something like like that I'm building what I think is quite an innovative guitar and it's uh, guitar number 21 for me I do have half a century of experience of woodworking and I made my first guitar at the age of 17 and this one is different in so far as it's an, uh, an electroacoustic guitar and will rely on really sophisticated graph tech ghost pickups which are designed for a nylon guitar that will allow me to use a guitar uh, synthesizer so I can create uh, through the fingerboard the sounds of a piano and saxophone etc and I'm uh, creating a slightly unusual shape to the guitar this is the guitar shape slightly off center I don't strictly speaking need a sound hole but I've done it partly for decoration but also so I can get the allen key in and adjust the truss rod and then the back will be some beautiful black walnut that I've cut from the solid and it will be screwed on so in other words we can take the back off so that I can adjust the electrics be very careful I don't drop this uh, whoops everything's quite a tight fit there we are so you can see the strutting of the front and the back and that's a beautiful piece of uh, black walnut that's 400 years old from Sion Park in London but the interesting thing about this guitar is the method of construction for the shape I've used a shuttering plywood which I think when it's lacquered has got a beautiful aesthetic and it's thick enough for me to do indentations for plugging in jacks and various electronic switches so I've kind of had to think about this in advance it's not just an artistic whim so the neck which traditionally is never a very tight fit um, it relies on a good gap filling glue because it has to be uh, adjusted for the angle you know crucially to get the string height just right but going back to the neck I mean that's just to give you a background or a context in which this neck will be and incidentally can you see the offset head now I'm using some very old machine heads that I've had since 1968 how about that got to clean them up with a bit of WD-40 but these machine heads will fit in there and you can see how I've echoed the shape of the body with the offset machine heads but I, I, I think the slotted design is really nice and I've used a bit of Balkan spruce for the head veneer and that matches the spruce on the top which incidentally is the finest quality spruce so I've used a combination of cheap and expensive materials including jet black ebony for the fingerboard and the nickel uh, silver frets I set in and then I've done my own markers which are made out of acrylic plastic so it's a real marriage of materials here in fact a guitar you couldn't have a better celebration of craftsmanship and technique than a guitar but as I say forming the neck and this neck is made up of laminates thin strips I don't know whether you can see them there lots of thin strips about four millimeter thick of the walnut and the marking out is very crucial shaded lines are actually used opposite to what they normally use for it's it means I want to avoid shaping into that because the height of this is already dictated it's absolutely crucial I mean I'm really pushing the limits I've made it actually slightly thinner than most guitar necks and it's also because I've used carbon fiber is very light 
but the action of the neck any guitar player will tell you it's very very important uh, and not necessarily better on more expensive guitars I'm going to use nylon strings so the tension won't be as great as metal strings and you can see little details here of the of the actual heel very very minimal and the uh, the twelfth fret will coincide with the shoulder of the guitar which is there that is the twelfth fret uh, so the shaping of the neck is really quite tricky and it's really a matter of every which way and I'm in my guitar workshop here tiny little workshop and I'm using a couple of vices one is a xylus clamp for supporting the neck uh, that's my dehumidifier that's just kicked in if you can just hear that in the background now using the xylus clamp and I'm supporting the neck on the other end with a piece of wood and uh, the simplest thing to do is to make a little support using the hot melt glue gun which I'll just use here to give it a foot stop it falling over great thing about hot melt glue gun is that it's like an extra pair of hands and valuable for supporting work I mean I could make a, a wooden jig and glue gun the neck to it instead of using a vise and then just glue gun the whole uh, kind of jig down to the the bench top but there you are that's a little bit stronger now now I've got access to rounding over the neck but importantly I've got the light shining down so I can see exactly what's going on But there we go, I've got it supported, I've got the neck supported in the vilus clamp and then I have to painstakingly use every which way method to, to round it. And I use what I call the bath towel method of abrading because this way it automatically gets a semicircle. But it really is time consuming. Now you could use a spoke shave along there. Um, I have used the power file sander. I've used um, a flat rasp, I've used a curved rasp and I use abrasive sticks using 40 grit uh, abrasive paper which really is very effective. In fact the bulk of the work is being done with 40 grit paper and then when I've got the shape as perfectly formed as I can bearing in mind that when it's lacquered it will show up any imperfections then I can work through the grades and work through um, 80, 120 paper and I never get kind of over religious and use kind of wet and dry and crocus paper. I just make sure that you can't see any abrasive paper marks on the wood. But the more I work this, the more it will highlight uh, the wonderful laminates. In fact, I'm just going to lick this. Maybe that's not showing up so well. I hope when I lacquer it, it doesn't completely disguise and darken the laminates. But of course, it makes the neck a lot stronger by having these laminates. And then the top, this is uh, there's a fair bit of shaping needed here that I'll do with the curved rasp and the abrasive sticks so that it forms perfectly. So it goes from the convex into the flat. So there's a lot of work involved in the neck and any guitar maker watching will know what's involved but it's it's really satisfying. It's almost the most satisfying aspect of the whole uh, guitar uh, construction.